This is Fashion Fridays. Every Friday we present you with a fashion icon or topic. Today we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Piaget. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers, today we're going to discover the 15 exciting facts you didn't know about luxury watch and jewelry maker Piaget. The company was founded in 1874 by Georges Piaget in La Cote Fay, Switzerland. He set up his first workshop on the family farm, where he laid the foundation of what would eventually become a luxury brand known for some of the most iconic jewelry and watches in the world. The brand's legacy spans well over a century and today has a strong reputation for quality and luxury. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Now, let's take a closer look at this imitable company, whose remarkable creations have been enchanting the world for over 140 years. Let's dive in to the 15 things you didn't know about Piaget. Number 1. Georges Piaget was only 19 when he began his business. The founder of this multi-million dollar dynasty was only 19 years old when, in 1874, he set out to make his own mark in this lucrative industry. He did it by opening a shop to earn a little extra money during the winters. It was here he started making pocket watches with high precision movements. His motto was always do better than necessary, and he did just that because soon enough, the word of his marvelous creations got out, and within a short period of time, his workshop became a regular supplier to some of the most prestigious watchmakers in Switzerland. Number 2. Piaget is the pioneer of the ultra-thin movement. 1960 was a great year for the Piaget brand for two reasons. One, they developed the Caliber 12P, which took the world by storm for having the thinnest automatic movement in the world. This allowed Piaget to become the IT brand when it came to understated yet elegant men's watches. Second, that same year, the company made their first pieces of jewelry. More recently, in 2014, Piaget made headlines again with the Altiplano 900P, which is the world's thinnest hand-wound mechanical watch. Number 3. Piaget didn't sell watches under their own brand name before 1943. Before 1943, the company had been making watches for 69 years without branding their products. The watches they made would be sold to other watch companies who would pass the products off as their own. It wasn't until after Georges' grandchildren Gerard and Valentin Piaget took over the company, they finally got rid of the middleman. This move finally catapulted the brand onto the international stage of luxury watchmaking. It's believed a lot of the timepieces made by Piaget before 1943 have been eternally lost. Number 4. The grandchildren of Georges Piaget were the business minds of the family. All credit goes to the founder Georges Piaget for starting the multi-million dollar family business from nothing. He made money by manufacturing watch components and selling them. When his son Timothy Piaget took over the reins in 1911, he made the business a full-time gig and put his full focus on creating top-of-the-line wristwatches. The company also started manufacturing watches and not just components. However, it never occurred to him to brand the business. It wasn't until Piaget's grandsons took over the company that it expanded exponentially. They officially registered Piaget as a trademark in 1943. They then began marketing their own products and even branched out into jewelry. Number 5. The most expensive Piaget watch sells for $3.3 million. Piaget is known and admired for their immaculately thin watch designs. This, coupled with the fact they are the only watchmakers that make their own jewelry, reinforces their timepieces as among the most expensive ones in the world. 
Their true shining star is the Piaget Emperador Temple watch. This is a made-to-order watch that has two timepieces nestled inside the wristlet. The first timepiece contains 481 brilliantly cut diamonds with a large emerald cut diamond on the crest. The second timepiece has a Polynesian pearl dial. The price tag on the Emperador Temple is a whopping $3.3 million, making it exclusive for lovers of luxury. Number 6. Richemont had to buy back $567 million worth of watches to save the brand. It's no secret that the sales of global luxury watches have dropped significantly. The Richemont firm, the new owners of Piaget, had to buy back a lot of watches that were not sold by the retailers. This is a measure taken to prevent flooding the market with luxury brands. When there's an overproduction, it's not uncommon for the luxury products to find their way into gray markets at heavily discounted prices. Don't worry though, these recovered watches are not destroyed, instead they're dismantled and recycled. Number 7. Piaget is plagued by high-end fakes. Well, Aluxers, there are fakes and then there are super fakes. Because of the advances in modern manufacturing methods, it's become increasingly easy for counterfeiters to produce watches that look almost identical to the real thing. Since Piaget is one of the most coveted watches, they have not been spared from this fate. Switzerland produces an estimated 30 million watches every year, and the number of fakes is almost 1.6 million pieces. To avoid being conned, consumers are advised to only buy from the Piaget website or authorized dealers. Number 8. Richemont acquired Piaget in 1988 Richemont, a luxury group holding company in Switzerland, owns a range of luxury brands, including Cartier, Chloé, Montblanc, and Lancel. It acquired Piaget in 1988. Richemont has a market cap of $54.5 billion. This firm specializes in designing, manufacturing, and distributing luxury goods all over the world. They operate through three categories, jewelry maison, specialist watchmakers, and other. Piaget falls into the second category. Number 9. Piaget owns the largest jewelry shop in Geneva. Piaget may be famous for its watches, however, its jewelry division has grown to become one of the largest in Switzerland. Today, Piaget owns the largest jewelry workshop in Geneva. Thousands of precious stones are set in this workshop every year. The diamonds used by Piaget are specially selected and set by hand. They're classified according to color, clarity, and carat. Their products include rings, bracelets, pendants, and earrings. Number 10. Piaget named their first female CEO in 2017. Piaget has been around for nearly 150 years, but it wasn't until 2017 that a woman took the top role in the company. Chabi Nori was named as CEO in April 2017. She joined Piaget in 2014, and before that she worked for 10 years at Cartier and 6 years at British American Tobacco. She's also the first woman to be CEO of any of Richemont's watch or jewelry brands. We talk about her previous place of employment in our video, The 15 Things You Didn't Know About Cartier. Click in the top right corner to check it out. Number 11. Piaget holds an annual polo competition for charity. Not many luxury brands get involved in charity like Piaget. The company holds an annual polo competition that raises money for the less fortunate. In 2015, they raised $1 million. The money was donated to Robin Hood, an organization that fights poverty and helps students to stay in school. They also threw a charity bash in Hong Kong back in 2011. The event was aimed at raising money to aid UNICEF's effort to feed impoverished children across the globe. Number 12. Piaget unveiled a unique 2-minute, 7-second polo experience to promote a new watch. The Polo Experience campaign was held in the same month as when the brand launched the Piaget Polo S timepiece, which was essentially an entry-level steel watch. 
This virtual reality campaign was created to engage the young generation because they were the ones who this watch was designed for. The polo experience allowed people to virtually transport themselves to a polo match in France, where they didn't just watch the game from the sidelines, they actually got the perspective of a pony as it galloped across the field. How cool is that? Number 13. Piaget watches have been featured in many well-known movies. Piaget has graced the big screen plenty of times. Steve Martin wore one in the 1987 film Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Piaget Polo Chrono was featured in the TV series Dallas, and Will Smith wore a Piaget Polo 45 in the movie Focus back in 2015. John Travolta also wore a Piaget in his recent film Gaudy. If you get the chance to watch or rewatch any of these, be on the lookout for a flash of a Piaget. Number 14. Piaget broke its own record for the thinnest timepiece. Piaget has held the record for the thinnest timepieces in four categories. Once again, the company did not disappoint this year. They introduced the Piaget Altiplano Ultimate Concept, measuring 2 millimeters thick. This is an impressive feat, given the company had launched the Piaget Altiplano Automatic just one month earlier. It took the R&D four years to develop this record-breaking watch. Their biggest challenge was to make this ultra-thin watch strong. To achieve this, they used a special cobalt alloy. Number 15. Ryan Reynolds is the international brand ambassador for Piaget. Ryan Reynolds is a Canadian-born actor who first burst onto the scene in the comedy National Lampoon's Van Wilder. You may also know him from his recent films such as Wolverine, Green Lantern, and Deadpool. In 2007, he joined Piaget in celebrating their 60th anniversary at the Salon International de la Haute Horlogerie in Geneva. The CEO, Leopold Mertzker, explained that they chose him as their ambassador for his unorthodox and daring acting abilities, which are qualities that embody the philosophy of the brand. Well, Alexers, that's a wrap on our 15 interesting facts about Piaget. Now, we're curious to know, which luxury watch brand do you rank in your top three? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, for sticking with us until the end, what does that mean? Of course, you get a bonus. Here it is, number 16, the famous Teflon Don owned a Piaget. John Joseph Gotti was the head of the notorious Gambino crime family. Having grown up in poverty, he turned to a life of crime. After murdering Paul Castellano, he remained the sole leader of the richest and most powerful crime syndicate. He was known for his impeccable sense of style and expensive taste. John Travolta plays the crime boss in the movie Gotti. Among his possessions supplied by his son John Gotti Jr. for the film is a Piaget ultra-thin white gold watch. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.